A pergola is a great way to transform a patio or deck into an outdoor room. Whether you use it for aesthetics, shade, or a combination of the two, it's one of the best things you can do to improve your outdoor living. The first thing you need to do is determine the footprint of your pergola. My patio is big, it's 20 foot square, so I made a big pergola. My footprint is 16 foot wide and 15 and a half foot long. Building a pergola is very similar to building with Lincoln Logs like when we were a kid. I used 6x6 pressure treated posts. They started out as 10 footers so I would have sufficient height for the structure. The first challenge is determining the exact lengths of the posts. You want the pergola to be level, but every patio has a pitch. My longest post is about 3 inches longer than the shortest. The tops of the posts are notched on both sides with a 1 inch shoulder that supports the beams. The beams are pressure treated 2 by 10 by 20 foot. I cut these fancy looking ends using a template with a 2 inch notch and a 5 and a half inch radius. You need to build the post and beam structure on the ground before you muscle them upright with four or five of your closest friends. Each end consists of two beams and two 4x4 cross pieces that stiffen the structure. Next you'll install four rafters above the posts. The rafters are all pressure treated 2x8 by, by 20 foot long. The outer four are cut the shortest though, 18 foot 7 inches. They're notched to fit over the beams, and they have the same 5 and a half inch radius detail on both ends. I used the same template to cut those too. This white pergola is actually version number 2. I didn't use pressure treated lumber the first time, and it rotted and needed to be replaced after 7 years. This small video clip shows how I used one board as a pattern to mark all the others. All these cuts were then made with a jigsaw. The four outer rafters are also attached with cross braces to lock the structure together. At this point, the hardest part is done and you can let your friends go home. Because I have a curved patio, I decided to curve the front of my pergola as well. It's a subtle curve, but a nice design detail. The center rafter is the longest, it's 19 foot 10 inches, the same length as the beams. The tough part was figuring out the lengths of the boards to form the curve. Well, I'm pretty good with Excel, so I created a spreadsheet to do the calculations. I just need to enter four values. The width of the curved structure, the lengths of the shortest and longest boards, and the number of boards that I want to use. Here's the spreadsheet with my measurements and the lengths of my 13 boards. Pretty cool, huh? And it works for any symmetrically curved structure, pergolas, decks, whatever you want to build. Oh, and for my friends in Europe, it also supports metric measurements. I love the clean symmetric lines and how the notch rafters look like they pass through the beams. Let's talk about fasteners for a minute. The structural parts were initially screwed and then bolted together using galvanized bolts and exterior deck screws. 3 8 inch carriage bolt, 8 inches long, the nut and washer on the other side, galvanized. Be sure to tighten the bolts from time to time because the wood will shrink. You might ask how I attached it to the concrete, but I didn't. This thing weighs as much as a Toyota Camry, and it withstood Hurricane Sandy in 2012, so I don't think it's going anywhere. The lights around the pergola are plugged into a GFCI outlet that's controlled by a weatherproof switch on the back of the post. I ran the power line out of the basement for the lights and the outdoor ceiling fan. You really can't appreciate the lights until the sun goes down. Then they look awesome. There you have it. There's my pergola in a nutshell. Be sure to check out these related videos and more on my website, handydad.tv.